say hot. Ready? Let me guess, you are from India? Nope. Pakistan. Pakistan? Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Hello. <laughs> What would you like? Oh. They already started, so. So should we start? No, it's over. <laughs> you have to go back. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Let them let them mm -hmm. reset reset the clock. Right. Can we reset the clock, please? Hello, hello. Okay. So now that you had this nerve-wracking experience, you really deserve a huge <laughs> applause. <laughs> Jeeva Sehat, are you ready? Yes. Go. Jeeva Sehat is an online medical healthcare facility in Pakistan. The total population in Pakistan as of right now is over 220 million and 423,000 doctors, which leaves us with a very undesirable ratio of one doctor for every 520 patients. Patients have difficulty finding appointments from the doctors at the time of need and patients have to wait in line for really, really long hours till the time they actually get the consultation done. So Jeeva Sehat is seamlessly connecting patients to doctors through video consultation from any part of the country, making healthcare more accessible for all. It's, okay, so the solution is twofold. One, we have Jeeva Sehat application, which is available on Android and iOS, as well as mobile optimized application. So uh, it's very simple to use. The user registers, then you know, gets, uh, then fixes an appointment with the uh, with our registered doctors on the application, and uh, then pays online to actually have the video consultation done. Second is GVS had integrated telemedicine device that we're calling JSITD. So it's the same process, but what's different is that the nurse has to take the device to the patient's house after they've made the appointment, and then connects them on a video consultation with the doctor, uh, who then analyzes all the um, vitals of the patient and do the, you know, online real-time prognosis. So the pricing model is uh, such that per video consultation, we're charging rupees 500 to 700, uh, and we're keeping a 10% commission for Jeeva Sehat, and GSITD, we're charging uh, 1,600 to 3,000 per consultation. Expected conversion rate is 5% uh, over three years, and since the past two months since we've launched, uh, we've earned about uh, a, a little over $1,000. We're expecting to get 259 million uh, sales revenue in over three years. And the team uh, includes three doctors that are based in UAE. And uh, they have over 15 years of experience in consultation, including two pediatricians and one orthoped orthopedic surgeon. And uh, myself and Soheb Shari are actually in uh, Karachi, uh, Pakistan and we're doing all the operations and strategy for them. We are looking to raise and expand with $1.2 million, uh, which we'll be investing in rural healthcare program as well, and creating and expanding uh, the mobile clinic operations in Pakistan. Thank you. Okay, Andy, you wanna go first? $259 million <laughs> in three years? That would be the, would it be the fastest growing company in the world ever? Uh -huh. That's your plan. Just checking. What's, what's how, the, how, do you, how do you get to that? Yeah, how do you get there? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, the hospital industry in Pakistan is quite huge, right? It's about like uh, almost, I believe, $500 billion. Uh, and uh, so, you know, we're actually looking at that and we're targeting every single person in there whoever wants to get connected to the doctors at any point in time, because we feel that, and we know that there's a need for it, you know, because uh, there are very less doctors for a, very, a lot of patients out there. And there's a lot of traveling time and everything that we want to reduce and make the access of healthcare uh, more, uh, more easier for everybody and lower cost. And also, we're planning to uh, launch JSITD, which is a Jeeva Sehat Integrated Telemedicine. Who's this guy? Oh, this is Soheb Sherry. I mentioned him in the team. So we both are actually working together for uh, uh, looking after the operations in Pakistan. Andy, go ahead. So, uh, yeah. Again, just clarifying the 259, does that assume that you have what percent of the total market then? Are you assuming that you'll have co competitors that will also get a piece of the market? Or are you? Thinking, right. how, how much of the right. market will you have? 
Okay, so we have uh, selected about 8% of the entire market that we have, which includes uh, patients um, going up to like all the hospitals. We haven't even considered the dispensaries right now or the medical camps, it's just hospitals, right? So uh, 8% and we're looking uh, to get to 59 million over three years, right? So that's accumulative of that. Go ahead, add. Yeah. Yeah. use the mic though. Use this. All right, thank you. So I just wanted to add, she's uh, absolutely correct about that. And uh, uh, one of the reasons why we, we have projected about $259 million is that um, Pakistan being the fifth largest uh, population in the world, uh, we have over 200 million uh, people. And healthcare is something regardless of uh, whatever class you belong to, uh, everybody must have an equal opportunity to have healthcare, and uh, just like she, she said, rural healthcare is also another program that we're looking into, and um, uh, we're, we're, we want to make sure that uh, it, this penetrates every uh, region in the country because it's really important. Uh, our urban population, uh, as compared to rural population, is uh, qu one third of the, of uh, the entire population, and um, the rural program will also uh, will also help and. Uh, the total population of the doctors in Pakistan is just... 423,000. Yeah. So. And that's, that means uh, one patient is to 520... Uh, sorry, one doctor uh, is to 520, 520 patients. patients. Yes. So this platform would, uh, is a solution to ensure that uh, health care is provided uh, to, to everybody. Yeah. It's accessible. Absolutely. This technology is not unknown. There are a lot of people doing it. So why... Are you the only one in Pakistan? They can't be. Are you the only ones in Pakistan doing video conference, video conferencing with doctors? Yeah, absolutely. Because the thing is that um, some of the hospitals uh, they they're using uh, WhatsApp or Skype, and uh, they have internet connection uh, issues. And um, uh, but this application itself. Uh, supports uh, the uh, instant messaging and um, video conferencing. Uh, we've tested it uh, for almost three, three and a half months. And <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to see so many applications in healthcare and education. Next up is Bizero. Bizarre entry from Bizarro. Ah. <laughs> Hi guys. Let me guess where you're from. Uh, Looking Turkey. at your bike. <laughs> uh, Istanbul, uh, from Boğaz University. Boğaz yeah. University, excellent. Yeah. You brought me a bike. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Does this have anything to do with your pitch? Does this have anything to do with your pitch? Yeah, uh, I just uh, want to show it. Uh, you just wanted to show your new bike to everybody? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it is a new concept, e-bike. Oh, it's a con so uh, you started pitching already. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Okay, so let's give him another big hand and let him get started. Hi, guys. Zero. Thanks. Uh, hi, guys. I am Mehmet Akıncılar, founder of Zero. Zero is a kind of bicycle sharing system company. You know all examples in your cities. We differently make uh, a pedal assistance electric bicycle and uh, accessible for you to remove all slopes in your cities. And yes, uh, we perform all operations and duties uh, in our team. And we are all students at Boğaziçi University, Istanbul, Turkey. And you know, there is no any vehicle, transportation vehicle, in distances under one kilometer in our cities. That's the first or last mile problem. And bike sharing systems try to solve these problems. And maybe the fastest growing market in the world. Uh, there are new examples, you know, of a mobile stationless concept. Uh, you can rent or return bike anywhere to anywhere in China. Uh, and Due to that, uh, there are a lot of bicycle dust in China. 
to solve all these type of uh, problems, we generated a new way. We don't need to any physical station, you know, and we use now a GPS-based virtual stations and also alarm uh, with Bluetooth uh, wheel lock. Uh, and we daily maintain our bicycles uh, in nice and we are charging our batteries. Uh, also, we are the first e-bike sharing system in Turkey. Uh, our usage fee is almost free, it is just 0.6 cents for a minute, and there is no any deposit in here. Uh, and uh, it's break even point, our bicycles, uh, just uh, a year, and maybe the cheapest example in the world. And we reached now 1250 registered users just in Walsh University with 10 bicycles. Uh, and our weekly growth rate is 30%. Uh, we took also uh, 6K uh, dollars from our sponsor, Vesta, uh, to support our revenue model with uh, sponsorship revenues. And we self fund uh, our project uh, up to now with our scholarships, you know, and uh, some funding uh, hours and sales. Uh, for six more uh, campuses, we need uh, 300K dollars. Thank you. I'll give you 15 extra seconds in the Q&A. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, the e-bike, uh, the, the lock, the, the uh, Bluetooth wheel yeah. lock, how does that work? Uh, there is no any lock for that bicycle uh, because we are just in a campus. It is secure enough. And for local areas especially, we use in here a kind of electronic Bluetooth lock, and you can't move it. And if oh. you move it uh, without any permission, uh, the alarm uh, which we activate. And uh, from your uh, phone, application. you can stop the alarm. Yes. Good. <laughs> yes. Uh, so. I uh, certainly, with the traffic that you have in, in Istanbul, I hope you're very successful with, uh, <laughs> with the, this model. But, uh, you know, obviously the climate here, you have uh, winter months, et cetera. How do you think um, seasonality will affect, the, the, the seasons will affect uh, the use of the bicycles? In Istanbul? In the winter, more specifically. Uh, that, uh, I actually, uh, we calculate our uh, using time uh, just 10 months in a year, uh, because uh, winter is coming, uh, you know. <laughs> 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 now you sound like Game of Thrones. Yeah. Winter is coming. So these are all going to be in schools, right? Uh, in the beginning, yes, but we also target the local areas in public spaces, you know. So eventually, this is going to be everywhere, not just in yeah, schools. Because yeah. uh, in schools, uh, the students Kind of poison, you know, uh, campuses. Uh, to scale. In the schools, the students have enough strength to just use a regular bike. And it's not a, they don't really have to go more than a couple of miles, I would think. Uh, uh, so why use the electric bikes Because for this? there are so many, so many slopes, especially in like Istanbul. And to, you know, we begin this pro began this project to solve our own problems first. Because in Boğaziçi University, there are huge slopes, maybe the uh, most huge slopes in Turkey. That would be a deal breaker at Boğaziçi, <laughs> big slope. So my biggest worry with this is the unit economics. If you look at all the, I mean, you mentioned some of the bike sharing companies. They're growing fast, but they're losing a crap ton of money. Um, so I saw some like operating costs, but the main thing is maintenance costs. It's everyone has underestimated yeah. the amount it needs. So how have you thought through that and how, in terms of scaling this out? Because this, this looks like it's gonna need a lot more maintenance than the, you know, the, the MOBA bike, MOBA, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, in, in fact, most of them decide that it's just cheaper to junk it than, and replace it with a new bike. Uh, I think so, uh, but uh, our bicycle is more expensive, but uh, we target with uh, this type of bicycle more uh, users. Uh, for example, uh, Oppo, uh, just for a bike, uh, reach 
20 or 50 users, just a byte. We uh, now uh, hundreds of users, just a byte. We reach, we can reach. Uh, but uh, it is better because. Uh, so you're saying there's less maintenance costs. Smooth driving system, and uh, there is no t any getting tired situation. You know. Okay. One last question. They're they're electric, but how do you are how do you charge the bat? You know, what's uh, the battery system? Uh, right now? now we uh, use uh, battery swapping technique. You know, we just change uh, okay. batteries. But next step, we use solar panels or uh, on it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is homemade or omad, depending on where they come from. Are you homemade? Homemade. Where are you from? Indonesia. Indonesia. Right. We had an Indonesian winner last year, you know that, right? Yes. Okay. You're here to defend the cup. Are you ready to pitch? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Homemade, go. Hello, my name is Derry. I am co-founder of Homemade. Homemade is a platform that Food Explorer can easily find affordable, healthy, organic, traceable food catering. We're facing a food problem today. Most of working people in Indonesia get their food from street food because it's cheap and easy to get, even though they know it's not healthy, low hygiene standard, and, over, <coughs> and most of them using overdue food materials that makes poor food quality. On the other side, it's hard to start proper quality business because people lack of capital and predicted market, they lost opportunity. So we create Homemade, a platform that integrates healthy food business. We empowering people to cook at home, we provide them a good food material from urban farming, and we have high standard of food assembly. At the end, we provide affordable, healthy, traceable food and sustainable business to create various menu every day. Indonesia is too big, with 50 billion dollars food service sales in 2019, 18, and 1.8 billion is from uh, street food, and we, our target is 10% from that transaction. We break to a food business. We do not need to build our own kitchen. We provide a thousand menu from various home chef. With low capital investment, we can build food assembly site, and we take 30% profit from food sales and urban farming. Since launch, we already have 7,500 7, revenue, 5,000 transactions, and our sales growth is 40%. Our plan in 2020 is opening more than 30 home food assembly sites across Indonesia. And based on that distribution, we will get 1.5 million of transactions with $2.2 .2 million of revenue. Our team consists of graduate chef and former of a big company. We are looking for investment, networking, and mentorship to reach our goal, to make more wealth to, to local home chef, strengthen our ready food, and reduce unemployment. Homemade is a healthy food explorer, and we will give you every day different taste. Thank you. What door is Mike? Test, test. All right. Uh, are you guys doing the delivery or someone else's? So they say again. The, 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 the delivery? Are you doing the delivery of the uh, food? At the moment, because we are still small, so we use the own delivery. Uh, we are using the one, uh, two bike, motor bike, and then one uh, car. So is that included in the 30% margin or? Uh, already including. So you're making 30%? Yes. Okay, got it. Cool. Oh yeah, before that, uh, I announce uh, my name is Munsi. I'm founder of Homet. Have you heard of Dakmakan? Sorry? Dakmakan? They do the, something very similar, except for they don't use chefs, but they make healthy meals and deliver it across Jakarta. Uh, I don't know, but uh, our competition is GoFood, uh -huh. but uh, GoFood is only uh, delivery system, they just get from the restaurant and bring to the customer, that's all. 
What's your ambition for this business? Is it just, just Jakarta, just Indonesia, the world? What, what's your, uh, how's this going to work? And Honestly, I'm really surprised when I'm here. So there is a lot of people from Pakistan, from Dubai, from uh, uh, Middle East. So they want, and then they ask us to open to another country. So, oh, we are welcome in the another country. So basically, uh, in the two years, we, will, we need to expand uh, our home made SMB. So, uh, yeah, I, I, like, I like this a lot. If there's anyone in the audience from uh, India, you'll, you'll know what the tiffin box kind of phenomenon is in, 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 in that market. Um, you know, food is obviously essential for all of our lives. Um, so how are you acquiring chefs? How do you scale the chef side of the business? Because to get users, you can probably partner with food delivery apps and do all of those kind of things. But getting chefs and ensuring quality is going to be tricky. So how's that happening? OK, this is for the, our quality control. So there is a lot of chef uh, apply in our office. Uh, at the moment, we already have 300. But we select the chef. First, uh, we need the behavior itself. So uh, once the behavior is passed, so we need to check to uh, survey uh, when they cook, how they cook, and then uh, kitchen itself. So we don't need the high kitchen, but low, uh, but hygienist. And then after that, uh, we check the color balance, the taste, and then the uh, the how they produce so once we have a standard so they will pass and then we will accept to our chef also we have a last one uh, oh. a graduate chef that has a quality control of the to manage a selected chef, selected chef. So it, sorry, I, I didn't get that. So just clarifying, this is prepared foods or is it more like the blue apron model where you're delivering all the ingredients? Uh, uh, so we, we assembly a food. So okay. uh, our home chef will deliver their food to us and then we put it into a menu with a, a good packaging and then we deliver it to our customers. It's pre-cooked? Is yeah. it cooked? Yes, yes, it's cooked, cooked it's beforehand. Cooked. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. We're down to the last three, and Mummy Helper is next. Mummy Helper, come out like that. <laughs> Where are you from? From Palestine. Palestine. Yes. The big hand to our friend from Palestine. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, go ahead, pitch. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Noor, and I am thrilled to introduce you to Mommy Helper today. In 2014, I moved to Chicago with my husband to continue his higher education. Being new to the environment and culture, but actually, I had many more challenges to face when we had our first child there. Guess what? My baby didn't come with a manual, no description, no tips. Believe me, I look around, I didn't find anything. <laughs> so when we look widely, all the mothers in the world facing a challenges during a parenting journey. But the Arabic mothers in particular face an abnormally high of major depressive and depression compared to the others in the region. As a result of that, we had nine from 10 parents, they are aggressive with their children. And unfortunately, the community didn't agree or didn't accept that mothers go and talk to, to a psychology consultant uh, physically. Let's talk about market opportunity. We had more than 65 million Arabic women using internet, familiar with the smartphones and tablets. And also we had additional market opportunity. We had 18 million Arabic moms, they are living abroad. And this number is growing rapidly due to the immigration issues. So mommy helper about make a change of motherhood world to let mothers enjoy the, the time with their babies in just few steps. Any mother can change her life with mommy helper. We connect them with a trusted professional psychology and social support consultant. 
and we had also a unique Arabic content. We had a core team of a professional, a qualified consultant from the MENA region regarding the competition, Mommy Helper, unique in the region, and we can talk it in the Q&A. We earn money by taking a percentage from each session, and also we had advertising model. We validate our idea in the market and raise 60 customers from those countries, and we are now looking to cover the United Arab Emirates market and expand to the GCC market, so we are looking for $80,000 to finance the next year of growth. Our team had technology, passion, and confidence about what we are doing. And also, just I want to say, let's make mom's lives better. Thank you. So are the people doing the sessions, are they fellow moms on the platform, or you're bringing them in from elsewhere? Yeah, so basically, you will download the app and then identify what is your problem based on which category. And then you will find the available consultant. They can, th their time, the bios, the rank for the consultant. And then you will book, book the session based on your time. And if you see this is the available one for you or the fit one for you. And then you will receive a link with the time and each uh, details in your email. And then you will make a consultation. And also we had a customer service. They are following with the mothers and the consultant in order to make uh, mentoring the session and uh, take all the notes to improve our service. Have you already done consultations? Yeah, 61. Okay. 61, okay. Yeah. What, what's the primary use case? What? What's the primary type of consultation? Yeah, uh, most of the consultation based on two categories. Most of, we note that the mother's going to the parenting uh, consultant for example, uh, a mother in Jordan, she had a stubborn children. All the time, she, she feeling bad because she hitting him. She didn't know what to do. So she talked to our consultant, give her some tips, and then she go. Some mothers feeling uh, seriously or something like a psychology problem, but her husband, for example, didn't allow her to go to a psychology therapist. So she come and book a session with us. Uh, our, our solution is we will provide her a privacy and we will provide her a convenient solution to let her be comfortable to book a session another time because we had a team just calling moms and following with her all the time to let mothers testify from our services. So what's the, uh, what's the percentage that you're taking of the uh, yeah. consulting? For now, we provide uh, a 20 to 30 minutes for a $15. We take $5 as 30%, $10 go to the consultant. And we take this percentage when, when we talk to the consultant and agree about this percentage between us and them. Yeah. Are you going to um, eventually make the consultants artificial intelligence? <laughs> Sorry? Uh, eventually, are you... I mean, if, if you know what the problems are, they're the same two problems over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Can you make your consultants just be artificial intelligence? Use AI. Uh huh. I make them robots. Use the computer. Ah, okay, okay, I, I got and, it. And yeah, automate. So actually, the we had a answers. small model, a small model in our app, just asking mothers about her problem and try to give her uh, automatically uh, um, uh, uh, response. Uh, but we improving this, so I didn't pitch this model because I am testing this, but it's in our mind. So we can also give her an automated response based on the common problems and common uh, uh, challenges the mother is facing. So it's now, if you check our app, you will see something like a chatbot, but we, we developed this in order to reach this. Yeah. Andy? So of the 61 um, consultations you've mm -hmm. done, is is there a, a conversion rate that that equates to? Yeah, I, I want to tell you that we didn't spend that much on the market in order to raise them. Most of them are organically rich. Something like most of our con consultants, for example, they promote themselves that, hey, we are now, you can book a session with us through Mommy Helper. So they come, they refer all the customers. Also, we I had see. a good social impact of our social media uh, channels. So mothers uh, trust us. We build a good uh, social media pages, so mothers come through the social media also. For example, when I launch, just make a live video for Mommy Hilbert, and I told 
models, hey, we, we, we are now talking to consultants and we will launch Mommy Helper. After the video, I get 10 consultation requested from models. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good job. Top seal ready. Top seal, are you ready? Ready. Where are you from, sir? Saudi Arabia, Mecca. All right. Top seal from Mecca. Are you want to go now? Yes. Why not? Okay. Well, reset the clock, please. Reset the clock. Reset the clock at 30. Okay. Let's give him a ready, set, pitch. Ready, yes. set, pitch. <laughs> Imagine uh, if you want to fetch or send something from one place to another. Or if you are an online store and you want to deliver your item to your customers, like having a fast, reliable delivery within one hour. Or if you are a business and you want to have a delivery as a service for your customers, but you don't want to own your own fleet because it's dif difficult, you want to focus on your business. Then you can use Tawseel. Tawseel is a last mile on demand delivery service that matches between clients and freelance drivers. Basically, we are Uber for delivery. Our technology built in in-house in Mecca Techno Valley. We, we are on iOS, Android. We have our own API, the integration, uh, point, sale, point of sales integration. We do uh, SDK and uh, uh, we have uh, 20 gigabytes of data we started to analyze. The market size is huge. We are in Saudi market. Built-in technology, everyone is targeting the Saudi market and we are there. Our competitors, some of them, there is a competition of course, some of them have a, they, they don't focus on delivery, uh, some of them have a, a not a scalable model, and some of them, uh, they have a white label for the technology. The business model, we take 15% of each order, order for now, uh, and we calculated that by distance and time. This is our monthly growth. We have experienced in the last four months no, uh, the tractions going from May to now. The monthly customer growth rate is 100% in the last four months, and also we have uh, a loyal customer growth rate is 40%. We have 3,000 uh, freelance drivers in 10 cities in Saudi Arabia, the downloads, number of downloads is 80%, uh, 80,000, sorry, 80,000 downloads. The, the funding we need is $1 million, and we want that for uh, spending on marketing and building a stronger team. This is the marketing activities. Uh, we launched the B2B, and we have a great team. Okay. Have last month? Uh, last month uh, we have uh, uh, around 10,000 users. Is that up or down from August? Is that up and down for what? Uh, is it more or less than August was? No, it's more. So that's 10,000 transactions happening on the platform or 10,000 active users? Uh, no, the users, okay. downloads. And how many transactions on the platform? Uh, All together, since we started, we have 20,000 th 20, deliveries. Wait. But especially in the last four months, because the technology is stabilized, and then we put some money for marketing, like not more, not uh, very much. We put only 10,000 k, and then uh, start uh, we start to f to fly. So. Um, why did you decide to do this? Why, why are we doing this? Why are you doing it? I'm doing it because, you know, there is someone has to do this. Because, you know, when, we, when you order something, you wait for six days until you get the delivery. You don't, if you order something, you want it right now. So our promise is to deliver anything within one hour. 
are the things that people are delivering? Sorry? What are the things people are delivering? Uh, people are delivering food. Food, okay. So yeah. your food delivery, mostly? Uh, not to food delivery. We, we market ourselves that we deliver anything that can fit in a, a small car. What's the average transaction size? The, the average basket size. Transaction so far? Or size. Size. size transaction of size. size. Dollars oh, okay. per delivery. Yeah. Uh, I think 300,000. Uh, Saudi, Saudi real. That is. Uh, About how much in dollars is that? Is uh, uh, 60? $60. 60 dollars. 60,000 altogether. How much per, per delivery? Per delivery? Yeah, in one car. Oh, oh okay. It's uh, um, ten, ten dollars. Ten dollars. The average. Do you have any problem with people uh, just stealing the delivery? No, actually, we were surprised by the behavior of our drivers, uh, but uh, but as Did well. You steal? <laughs> but sometimes the clients. You didn't ask that about the bike. <laughs> but sometimes the clients, uh, they don't answer, you know, the phone or the, the, they don't open the door. But it happens like less than 1%. It's pretty successful. Oh, and are you getting recurring customers? Do they keep coming back to you? Yes. Uh, the the uh, um, uh, retention, we started working on the retention and data analytics, and they have 40% return customers in the past uh, three to four months. What's your biggest challenge right now? What is the biggest? Your biggest challenge right now. The challenge is actually we, we need the funding <laughs> to, to go to the next level. But the man needs his money. <laughs> yes, we're running out of fuel, so we need that to, to go to the next level. But if you had the money, what would be the challenge? <laughs> If we have the money, the challenge is the, to hit the hunt uh, uh, strong, stronger teeth. Hmm. Know how? Talent? Talent, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Our last finalist is Atlan Space. Did Marhaba. I say that right? Marhaba? Atlan Space? Is that it? Yes, exactly. Where are you from? Marhaba, Istanbul. Marhaba, Istanbul. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Morocco. Morocco. Which yeah. city? Uh, Rabat, the capital. Rabat, OK. OK. Thank you. So another nice, warm welcome to our last competitor from Rabat, Morocco. Thank you. Please reset the clock. Ready, yes. set, pitch. Hello, I'm Badr, CEO of Atlant Space. $1.4 billion is what illegal fishing is costing in West Africa every year. But this problem is not specific to Africa. It's a worldwide issue that is costing emerging countries $26 billion. Why? Because those countries are not able to monitor very large geographical area, such as the ocean. So we developed our Atlant Space a patented technology that guides and coordinates the activity of huge drones so they can monitor very large geographical areas. It's a patented technology, and our artificial intelligence typically helps drones and makes drones decide where to go, understand what they are seeing, and takes the best decision in the specific situation. What we sell is Atlan Core, Atlan Service, and Atlan Cloud our products that we invade in a turnkey solution we sell to the local partners we recruit so they provide a final uh, solution to the end customer. The global market is $2.63 billion and we're targeting West Africa which is $60 million. Our competitors are satellites that have weather limitation, I'm sorry, uh, traditional drones that have an operational range limitation of maximum 90 kilometers. Light planes that have weather limitation, very expensive, and needs human pilots. In our expansion, we rely on our global, regional, and local partners. We have built $3.48 million of pipeline because what we are selling is a turnkey solution that costs 
$250,000 to, to the local partner that sells it to the end customer. With, we built this pipeline with nine different customers in five different countries. The founders are totaling 27 years of experience in business development, closing and signing multi-million dollar deals in Africa, artificial intelligence, and intellectual property. But Atlant Space is not only about illegal fishing. The same technology can be adapted sorry, to do border control, border control, deforestation, maritime activity management, among others. So the $2.63 billion we were talking about can be multiplied by 10 or more. We are inviting you to join our round of funding in three months to raise $3.4 million. Thank you. Uh, joining me, my friend for 17 years, business partner and CTO of Atlant Space, Eunice Moomin. Hello, everyone. Go ahead. So the three and a half million in pipeline, what needs to happen for that to actually be real money? So uh, we're on advanced discussions with many customers in five different countries. And uh, actually, we're planning uh, a field demonstration in the next two months. This is what we're seeing. Uh, round of funds in three months because in the next two months we're doing a live demonstration to a customer in the Indian Ocean, uh, states, uh, state islands of Indian Ocean that are having a very, very big issue of illegal fishing. And so, yeah, the most, the, I'm coming from this world of B2B, B2 government. And the customer needs to see the technology uh, on the field in his premise, even though the technology has been tested and is working elsewhere. So with those customers, we're discussing demonstration, field demonstration. And what's interesting is that, is that those demonstrations will not be funded by us. But we are talking with NGOs that will fund those demonstrations for the customer and that will bring the money to buy the, sol the solution. How much are the NGOs paying for the demonstration? The, the NGO is paying, is paying around 40K. Okay. So 40K to you? Not, uh, you, it's not 40K to us, it's 40K to cover the travel I and the expenses yeah. and everything. Are, are most of your customers so far that you're talking to governments or NGOs or are there any corporate So, uh, So uh, mainly today we're talking for illegal fishing with governments and NGOs, but we lately started discussing with mining, uh, big firms that are having open field mining and that are facing very huge security issue. So yes, we're uh, today diversifying to uh, corporate in mining. Tell me about the, the partner model. Uh, how are you working with partners? It's ended a little bit somewhere in between a franchise and somewhere in between a partner. So how is that working? So we're, uh, we're replicating somehow the business model of Cisco, IBM, Microsoft and the others. This is the, the model I've been working with for the last eight uh, years. And so we're recruiting, we're recruiting local partners th with the, uh, I mean, the main objective of having local partners is first, speed up the process of sales. Second is that they're also putting cash, so we will not be waiting for the government to pay them so they pay us. We will be paid before they've been paid by the government. This is our, I mean, in the, in the, the contract. And uh, finally, we advise them on buying the, the UAVs, the big drones, so we don't invest our cash in it because we don't see any value there. I mean, we don't, we'll be just margin it and it will be cash consuming, sorry for us, so we're not interested just selling our technology. Last question, Andy. So the, the, there's not a hardware component to it that, that you're involved with. These are generic large drones and the value is really in the software. Yeah, in the, the ship, software I mean, in, uh, what we're developing is algorithm that we install on a ship that we install on the UAV. Okay, and the patent that you have, is it, is it what regions, is it, is it a global patent? So today it's uh, a Moroccan patent that we are uh, uh, extending with PCT to other regions and other countries uh, in the next coming months. And we're planning to uh, submit two uh, new patents before the end of 2017 and five others uh, before end of 2018. Because we believe that uh, it has to be patented and uh, locked. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Okay, so this ends the presentations. I'm going to ask the judges to move into their hiding space to discuss and debate and pick the winners.
I hope you are as impressed with the presentations as I am. We've listened to mommy helpers, to drones, to healthcare, to education, to delivery. The variety of these startup ideas is what attracts me the most in these events. And of course, the youth and the energy and the <laughs> desire to change the world. Right. Did you all get the sense that it's about making a difference, changing the world? It's not about money. They need money. They turn money into meaning and results and make the world a better place. That's what entrepreneurs do. Thank you.